does and about how he learns this magic. And we saw examples both from the Middle East and from uh, my experiences and examples from India. And we also saw an example of a British person who founded much of the evil and the corruption that exists in our society because of the magic that he performed. After this, there should be no doubt amongst in the minds of the people, the ruling of magic and our enmity towards it. And no doubt that fighting magic is from the highest form of fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so again, it's my encouragement to the brothers to learn more about these things, to learn how to combat it, to help to make the society free of magic and of magicians and free of those people who worship the shaitan and dedicate themselves to serve the shaitan. And uh, at the end, I think uh, I would like once again to apologize for the fact that this was a, a very uh, unprepared uh, lecture today. I was given a little, very little notice, but alhamdulillah, hopefully there was uh, some benefit. And at the end, we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to teach us that which benefits us and to benefit us with that which he teaches us and to increase uh, myself and all of you in knowledge. Uh, and wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen and I'm sure we have some time for a few questions inshallah at the end Jazakum Allah khair MashaAllah what an outstanding lecture very eye-opening and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you for the benefit that you have given us as well as protects all of us from the evils of what we heard of today before we begin the Q&A session there's just a few announcements that I'd like to make firstly uh, the CDs and DVDs of the previous lectures uh, over the years, you can purchase them uh, from the cabin outside from the Red Brick Media shop or via the Red Brick Media website which is www.redbrickmedia.co.uk. Also next week the lecture is entitled The Cure and the Remedy. The Cure and the Remedy by Dr. Ahsan Hanif. And that will be taking place after the Isha prayer as normal, even though the clocks are changing. So please uh, take note of the time. Even though the clocks are changing, it will still be after Isha. Also, the final announcement is that Green Lane Masjid has a number of da'wah projects to carry forward the message of Islam to, the, to our non-Muslim community, our neighbors and friends. Our next event is taking place in the area of Acox Green, uh, and that will be in Acox Green Library next Saturday. That's the 31st of this month. If you want to get involved or know anyone else that wants to get involved, or if you have any ideas or initiatives of your own, please see our beloved brother Yusuf. If Yusuf can give us a wave. Uh, so please get in touch with him after the Q&A session, and inshallah, uh, assist us in this uh, objective. Uh, if anyone has any questions, please raise your hand and when pointed to, uh, phrase your question. Uh, if you want to write any questions down, you can send them forward as well. Uh, sisters, if sisters or anyone online has any questions, um, please send them down to the brothers. Sakum Allah khair. Okay, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Salatu was Salam, Ara Rasulillah, Wa Ala Ali, he was Habi, human Wala. What is the best way to dispose of things like hair and nails? I mean, to be honest, Alhamdulillah, I don't think it's as much of a problem in this country as it is in countries where where magic is very prolific. Where it's really, really prolific and where it's something that's a daily occurrence amongst many people, you obviously have to be extremely, extremely careful. Um, I mean, alhamdulillah, in most places in this country, it's simply a case where, you know, things are disposed of hygienically and just thrown in the bin and nothing happens. But people who are particularly, you know, concerned, in this case, I mean, it's difficult in this country, depending on, you know, health and safety laws and things. But a person should at least be sure that, or confident that what, where, the way that they're disposing of things like hair and nails and something is somewhere where it's not easy for somebody to get hold of them, you know, where it's not something that's... Um, you know, for example, if you live in a house where you suspect that somebody practices magic or have a neighbor or something like that, that you'd be particularly you know, careful around that person is probably the best that I can advise. It's very, very difficult other than that. And I think, alhamdulillah, you know, most people uh, don't have so much of a problem. But those who are particularly concerned about magic generally or who have a, a particular fear or an individual that they're particularly concerned about should take extra precaution, especially when eating with them or something like that, that they are very, very careful to dispose of things properly 
and not to give somebody an opportunity. And of course, the adhkar, the dua, the dhikr, and all of the other things to protect yourself. Um, I think that's probably the best advice that I can give on that topic. Um, perhaps uh, some of the other brothers can you know, throw some more light on it, inshallah. Tfadal. Go on, yeah. There's no doubt that uh, places where this type of thing is performed are, are places that, you know, they have an effect. It has an effect on the place. You know, even if it happened a hundred years ago, you can see the effect on the place if it's been a place of shirk and a place of kufr. And a person at the most, a Muslim should do if he needs to study in that place where this has been performed in the past is to make sure he's very strict on his dua, on his adhkar, morning and evening, on his uh, dua when he leaves the house, when he goes to that university, every time he sets his foot in it, he says, أَعُوذُ بِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ تَامَّاتِ مِشَرِّ مَا خَلَقْ and, you know, uh, I mean, it's, if it's in a person's house or something like that, then I would say, you know, recite Surah Al-Baqarah in that place. If it's possible for students and there is like an Islamic society whereby they can sit in a place in the university and recite Surah Al-Baqarah, for example, then this is something beneficial. Otherwise, everyone takes the precautions they need to take, you know, to protect themselves from that place. But it's not, it's not, uh, it's easily believable that a place where someone like Alistair Crowley had been would be, you know, have these kind of things happen uh, to it. Allahumma sta'an, wallahu a'lam. Tafadhal ya. It seems that this was a test sent down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, like for example the test of the people at the time of uh, uh, at the time uh, the, the army of the time of Bani Israel when they were told about don't drink from the river they were thirsty and they were told don't drink from the river they needed to drink they wanted to drink except a handful only drink a handful as a test as to who is going to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who is going to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it seems that this was a test uh, in which the 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 angel said we have been sent with something but but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you not to learn so the people of piety and taqwa they kept away and they said they didn't want to learn and those people of disobedience and evil they are the ones who learned and the shayateen and they are the ones who spread magic amongst amongst the people wallahu alam the second question was um, magicians um, obviously you say they have to go to such a, a disgrace place they have to do some some much acts so much disgrace acts that their hearts are sealed so basically they can't um, come away from I mean, like I said, I said, I think every time I said it, the question was, how can, if I said the magician's heart is sealed, he has to do so much evil that his heart is sealed, how can anybody come to Islam after that? The answer is that I said, I think for almost every time, or at least I intended to say every time I mentioned it, almost everyone. There is nobody that we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot have mercy on if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills and Allah knows the hikmah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the wisdom and the nature of the people behind that. So there's no doubt that it is not an impossibility uh, that somebody would repent but it is so, so, so rare that somebody repents from such an evil set of actions uh, and the idea behind the shaitan getting this person to do it is so that they have a very, very tiny chance of repentance and of course, the more they seek it, the more power they seek, the more they get into it and the harder it is to come out. Perhaps a magician who practiced magic when he was a Christian or a Jew or a Hindu or a Buddhist and then later on heard the message of Islam is perhaps the most likely of the people to repent. But even in, amongst those, it is, a, it is a rarity and Allah knows best. Tafadhal, ya akhi. I wanted to ask you about the, um, you know, the shapes you're saying with the Ain and the Jim. Yes. Um, what if you read something in your horoscope that later becomes true. What about if that causes your heart to be corrupt and it causes you eventually to leave the religion of Islam? So subhanAllah, a person needs to fear Allah as much as they can. 
and you know, in this, um, I think this ruling is something that you know we should leave it, uh, uh, leave it, refrain from making a specific ruling on any one individual. But we say that a person should certainly fear Allah as much as they are able. Inshallah, that's I think all the time we have uh, questions for. Jazakumullahu khairan wa barakallahu fikum. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. love this video it's good to actually be back to be reacting and we're looking at a video that goes in depth about something yes it's only 20 minutes long but you can get the concept of what's being spoken about the bad the good and everything in life i feel like to protect our souls to protect our energy and everything that surrounds us we need to be very very strong in our faith be so grounded that you will remind yourself should i do this no this is wrong you restrain from doing that bad thing or you walk away from that bad thing and if it's a it's a place with bad energy like i said just be so grounded in your faith that you know even if something bad happened in that place god is with you god walks with you nothing will ever harm you because you said the a true God. God will never forsake his children that truthfully follow him. And for those that maybe have done bad and want to go back to God, like the video said, like the guy in the video said, God welcomes everyone back. So it's up to the person to say, you know what? I want to turn my life around and give it to God. And if they do that, God will for ever will come them no sin is too big whether i sin differently than them as long as we both acknowledged god ask for forgiveness we're more than welcome by god otherwise if we just um live life and do whatever we want thinking there's no consequences then they're more wrong i feel like we're very very wrong to live a careless life it's quite dangerous let me know what you guys actually think about this amazing video what do you think about magic what do you think about the guy that was being spoken about what are what are your thoughts please comment down below get this uh, conversation started if there's something you guys want me to react to drop the link in the comment section below and i'll be more than glad to react to it make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video